Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ivan Penaluna. I'm Byron Bertram. And on tonight's show, New Pope, not as good as Pope Classic. Oh, you guys like to tell jokes and giggle and kid around, huh? Giggling like a bunch of young bros in the schoolyard. Well, let me tell a joke. I wanted this to be professional. I don't gotta listen to this shit. You certainly don't, pal. Because the good news is... Awesome! With Byron Bertram and Ivan Penaluna. Okay, so this is the story about the Pope. The Pope, everybody loves the Pope. He's in, he's in Cuba, he's in America, he's meeting Obama, he's kissing Michelle and all that. Michelle wears a $2,300 dress to meet him. Probably not the best idea, but anyway, fuck it, she's committed. And the Pope's all over everything. He's like, hey, and everybody's like, whoa, we never heard of the Pope. He's playing basketball oh, with kids Pope in Harlem. He's playing, <laughs> playing basketball with the kids in Harlem. Exactly. And, you know, and everybody loves the Pope, right? Yeah, Pope is really popular it's right like, now. Oh, Catholics were like, it, it was only about two years ago, because I remember, right? Catholics were like, oh, fucking Catholics, hate them, kill them all. Bring the Muslims in, let's kill the Catholics, yeah. Well, Ratzenberger, nobody liked that guy, but this Yeah, no Pope. one likes him. No, no one liked him, and we'll touch upon him later on, because he is the Pope Classic. Let's call him Pope Classic, right? right. <laughs> New Pope, Pope 2.0. Yeah, right? he's the new pope. Everybody loves him. The thing that gets me about the new pope, and the thing that worries me about the new pope, that what I'm not comfortable with, is that liberals like him so much, right? And the fact that liberals like him so much makes me suspicious because it's like, well, you know, it's like you look at him, you go, mm, I don't know, what's wrong with him? You turn him over like a fucking four-day-old, you know, steak, and you go, <laughs> ooh, is, is he all right? Because the liberals like him, so there must be something fucking wrong with him. You want, you want just a traditional kind of pope that yeah, everybody. No, really. Really, I just don't trust... If liberals like something, I always think, what's wrong with it? Well, because they like Pabst Blue Ribbon, and that's a shitty beer. Well, that's a very good point. That yeah. is a very good point. And I should anchor all of my arguments in the next five minutes on that point. Yeah, pretty much. I think everything should just come down to, when it comes to theocracy, religion, politics, it should all come down to uh, your love of shitty beers. If, yeah, exactly. If you happen to be more often a left-leaning person with an ironic Taliban beard yeah. and skinny jeans, and you can't write poetry, and you wear glasses, even though you got 20-20 vision. Well, yeah, exactly, and, it's, and that's the reason why Saudi Arabia, you know, they're, they're, what they have a, they like Budweiser, and the reason why they like Budweiser. I is thought because, they don't have beer there. No, no, the Budweiser won't get you drunk. They love it. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's that's the way it works. So okay, the new Pope, everybody loves him, you know, and he's from a background. Budweiser, so Allah approved. This beer is shit. The thing about the new pope, uh, and many people do not know this, is that he comes from a long tradition of South American uh, Catholicism, which is called. Um, Oh, God, what's it called now? It's gone from me. Liberation Theology. So basically what you do is you ha help out the uh, poor people, you help out the indigenous people, and you fight against the great oppressors, which in South America are generally, <laughs> ironically, the Catholic Church, but also uh, big landowners and stuff like that. And, you, you know, you, you, you protect the rights of the small people, which is what this pope has been doing. And you see him, he goes and washes people's feet. He dines with the homeless instead of the oi polloi of the uh, Capitol Hill and that sort of thing. So he's very much in that thread. And for many people who aren't familiar with this uh, concept of uh, liberation theology, then they'll say, wow, this guy's like a breath of fresh air. And I suppose he is in that respect. And uh, that's what makes him, uh, to a large extent, the new pope. Well, yeah, I mean, that's exciting. He's kind of like the Robin Hood pope, right? Exactly. It's, I don't know if he stole anything from the rich, but he... He's giving it to the poor, I guess. He's giving it to the poor. He's playing and basketball. And people like that. Yeah. And, you know, and that, is, and, and, and that is central to the teachings of Jesus. He's a Jesuit, and so that's... Uh, fuck it, there's no jokes in this, is there? Well, no, no, but well, I mean, like Pope class, I mean, Pope, new Pope, I mean, I don't know. Does he, does he have extra aspartame in him? <laughs> Like, I don't know. Okay, okay. But, you know, in comparison to Ratzinger, who everybody hated, and the thing about Ratzinger that everybody said was, he was in the Nazi youth. Right? Yeah, but nobody every, had a choice. Yeah, well, exactly. And this is my point about it, right? People say, well, the old Pope, the German Pope, he was in the Nazi youth. He was in the Nazi youth when he was 14 in 1944. And my point has always been, do you know who wasn't in the Nazi youth in 1944? Fucking no one. This wasn't a lifestyle choice. It's not like they knocked on your door and went, yeah, do you want to be in the Nazi youth? And you go... No, I'm not really feeling that. I've, yeah, anyway, they're just got, like, got no, piano. I think I'm going to vote for the Green Party. Yeah, you know, he's got piano practice. He couldn't possibly join the Nazi youth on Saturday mornings. And they're like, you know what? Fuck you're dead. It. You're dead. The Russians are at the door. You're in the fucking Nazi youth. And that's the way it goes. I've got a next door neighbor whose dad was shot in the ass 
age 15 fighting the Russians on the Eastern Front. Yeah, right. So, and, and the joke in our neighborhood is he was shot in the ass because he was running away. She doesn't like that. He probably was, and who would blame him? Well, I don't but anyway, blame him. It's like being is, drafted by the Boston Bruins. You didn't have a choice. You got drafted by them. <laughs> You could ask for a trade, but it's, you know, by that point, the war's over. So I'm saying Pope Classic isn't that bad. I think I understand why people have a, 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 an issue with it. You know, they, the, the might and the power of the Catholic Church and all the land they own and all the money they have. And, and all the kid diddling. And yeah, yeah, and all that. I mean, what about, what about if the new Pope got involved with that? With the kid diddling? Yeah. Well, as long as he, you know, diddled a uh, progressive kid. Well, what about if he did only diddled rich kids? Well, if he diddled rich kids, then then you'd just be like, oh, yeah, just, you know, oh, you can't diddle poor kids, can you? <laughs> there you go. I mean, yeah, either be- way, you know, just, you know, it's just like, oh. Pff. Anyway, I don't know if there's anything funny in pedophilia. <laughs> Do you know, the Maybe one we could edit can't, that part Okay, out. this is my one problem with the new Pope. This is my one problem. And many liberals and progressives, they have no background in Christianity. They haven't read the Bible, so they don't know this shit. People who've read the Bible know this shit. If you're the Pope, the one thing you cannot do is address the UN and call for a new world order. You can't fucking do that. You cannot do that. And you might be looking at me going, why can't you do that? It sounds like a great idea. In the Bible, it says there will be a false prophet. He will call for a new world order. He will be the false prophet. And so the one thing you cannot do, if you've read the Bible, and I'm sure the new Pope, Pope 2.0, has read the Bible, and he knows the one thing he can't do is that. But the thing is that now we live in a world where people don't know that shit. And so they go, oh, it sounds like a great idea. Yeah, and well, this like, is my like me, I never read the Bible. I'm just agnostic. The lazy person's religion. It's my yeah, favorite. Yeah, so when the Pope asks for a new world order, you go, yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, right. well what is a new world order? Hey, let's not, uh, let's recycle and shit. Well, what, what you can't call for is one world government. In fact, you, more specifically, you can't call for a one world government, which is what the Pope has called for. Is that what he said? I mean, many, many listeners out there will know this. They'll be going, fuck, Byron, what the fuck is wrong with you? Do you not know this? You can't call well, for I got a bigger, one world government. I got bigger issues, government. like my fucking, you know, very mediocre acting career. Okay, fair myself. enough. But anyway, this is what he's called for, and that is why people are suspicious of him. Because if you read the Bible, you cannot call for that. And you know He knows better than to do this, so why is he doing it? Well, that's my point. Anyway, I don't expect any answers out of you. But well, sure I, I think, I, I mean... I, we'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, is he, is he going to be able to... Is he going to do it? I mean... Well, I don't know, but he could be, uh, he could be uh, you know... He, he could be a, a, a very important player in bringing in a new world order and a one-world government. Absolutely, he could. He's got a lot of sway. He's got four... Four, no, three billion Catholics or something like that in the world. And he's got a huge Twitter following. Even not quite as much as Katy Perry, but he's, he's up he's, there. He's, he's, got, he's got almost as many twi- Twitter followers, given all the languages he speaks, as That's Katy true. Perry. That's cheating, though, because Katy Perry uh, has so only in the one language. So whatever. Well, that's whatever Katy Pope. Perry's fault for not learning more languages. No, but you got nothing on Katy Perry. Katy Perry's like, whatever. Your eight languages are nothing compared to Perry. Yeah, do you know what I think the new Pope should do? He should run for President of the United States with Kanye West as Vice President. Well, that'd be good. I, th- I think we've reached the pinnacle of Western civilization when that happens. A Francis, a Francis West Society? <laughs> <laughs> I, want K- I want Kanye West to speak for, uh, for the UN. Do you want him to what? what? Well, Gaddafi spoke to the UN, you know. Does, it, does that mean that Kanye West is going to die soon afterwards and have his country overthrown by NATO? <sighs> Jesus, I don't know. But at least, you know, we might get a broomstick up his ass or something before he dies. <laughs> anyway, what else? Uh, there's been other things in the news this week. Uh, more importantly, as you, uh, you know, alluded to earlier on, you've, uh, you've, uh, you've been quite busy this week. You've been I have. I, I, I had, yeah, a really good day on set. I'm, I'm going to be in the show, CBC's uh, Romeo section. It's about espionage in uh, the Pacific Rim. And it, there's a lot of mystery involving the, the, the storyline. It takes place in Vancouver, which is great. And uh, Chris Haddock, producer, I play a cop, and I got three... Three whopping lines. What do you say? I say, um, license registration, passport if you got it, and then here's a big one. Right. I can hold on to this for a while. Fuck. So it's like a, you're like a return character. I may, well, I didn't get killed, so I hope so. So you're going to be in it every week? Is it gonna oh, be like it'd be great. Being, uh, being Erica? It's like being Erica. But like cops. But cops. Fucking fantastic. I yeah. can't wait. CBC. I wish I had a TV. Yeah. We're I know. TV yeah, that'd be these. great. That'd be great. I hope like CBC does what they, you know, if it's a good show, it doesn't stand a chance because CBC cancels everything. Well, the, what CBC does with a, a good idea is that they just bury it underground for a thousand years until everybody who's even had anything to do with it has died. Yeah. And then they go, oh, what ideas? We've never heard of it. We're just going to do a rerun. Yeah. 
let's just play a rerun of uh, Little Little House on the Prairie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Mansbridge, dig him up. He's not dead. Dig him up. <laughs> dig him up anyway. Put him in that fucking chair. Yeah. Let's get Jim Gavetti back. Rex Murphy. Back. Dig it. I actually quite like Rex Murphy. I'm not going to say anything bad about him. Yeah, I don't Actually, mind Rex Murphy. Ah, he's great. He's the only person with a fucking brain at CBC. Yeah, what else? Uh, I had a few auditions for... Uh, oh, I had an audition for a role of douchebag. Well, that's unusual. Yeah, that's pretty good. So and then how I, did it oh, go? And then I had... Uh, I don't, well, I didn't get the part, so I guess I was too nice. <laughs> well, did you ever play it? Well, yeah, yeah, I was just hitting on some girl, and she just basically... <laughs> I get a lot of these parts where I hit on a girl, and then she's just a fucking bitch to me, and it's two lines. You, know, you like, get really angry. And then it's like, hey, how's your day going? Ah, fuck off. And like, Byron Bertram, Casey Talent. Bye. And then you leave. <laughs> and you go all the way to North Van to do it. Nice. Uh, man, that's what you and then, so two lines, but this is kind of was a mixed confusion. So uh, this is myself, body magician is always like, uh, I think I'm a shallow person. Um, so like I had one audition that says, handsome, but not modelly dad. I'm like, okay, I could do that. That's cool. Yeah, thanks. I'll be handsome. I know I'm, I'm, I'm handsome. I'm, and so whatever, just say, you know, opening presents of the kid. Anyway, then I had another audition. It was a disgusting, fat bar drunk. So it was it was like, hey, I'm handsome. That? And I'm, I probably did better at the, uh, the bar. No, actually, I got a call back for handsome dad. Oh, nice one. So, so you're moving up in the world. Have you been working know. out? Well, yeah, I worked out uh, a couple times so, uh, last you, year. Actually, you had an offer this week, didn't you, as well? You had, you had a rather unusual offer. This is this is weird, too. So showbiz brings you weird stuff. So I was doing a show, doing street performance. Somebody saw my show, and they emailed me out of the blue, and they said, hey, I work for a colostomy bag manufacturer, and I'm trying to do this fundraising campaign for, for these colostomy bag liners, and we want to do, like, a funny sketch. So if you could write something funny about you know, uh, something really tragic, that would be great. So I'm, I'm get, I don't know what I'm going to do. What did you come up with? Be like, hey, are you sick of shitting in these bags? These bags are better. No, you didn't come up with that. No, you I told didn't. me about no. what you came up with. I Basically, I was just kind of like, this is the problem. This is the problem. It's they're loud and they're hard to get in and out. You and said they, your bag of shit is ready. Your bag of shit is ready. That was the that was the line. I don't want to blow it. That's you know because. Well, it, it's not like you have blown a million dollar deal by saying it on a podcast. There's hundreds of dollars at stake. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. Why, yeah that's hey, there's this, this is shit money, literally. But so you get these you get these weird offers, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, mainly there's, just from creepy gay men. There's, I don't money, know. there's money in those hills, though, isn't there? There is. There's some shit in those bags. <laughs> right, ah, here you, Eureka! We struck brown. <laughs> 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 on that note let's well, go to the shitty news let's go to the fucking news this is the fucking news all right go go in five four i can't do it we'll do it live okay no we'll do it live fuck it do it live i can i'll write it and we'll do it live this is the fucking news fucking thing sucks All right, so today in the fucking news, uh, social media is in an uproar right now, angry at a pharmaceutical CEO, Martin Shereel. I don't know how to fucking pronounce his name. Why? Because he recently bought the rights to an AIDS drug and raised the per pill price from $1,350 to $700 each pill. Have you heard about this? Um, No, but it it sounds like reckless, short-minded economics. It was all over my Facebook feed. Is like well, crazy. you hang out with different people. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so what? I mean, I didn't even know AIDS. I thought that was like out of style. <laughs> yeah, it is with you, Byron. I thought that was like so like eighties like condom. I don't need a condom. I just just I, get I AIDS come inside you. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, people, right. are, people are mad. Obviously, that, that he's people like are always profiting. Mad of, listen, no, that's are, that's horrible. What he's the profiting hell? from people that are you know you sick know and what? dying. You know, well, what? that's if, yeah. No, you can't do that. Like come every on. pharmaceutical. Come exactly. on, listen, company. listen, listen. People are so angry on Facebook. It's the one reliable thing in this world, this ever-changing world. The anger of people on Facebook, the indignation, and the rage, are absolutely fucking nothing with their false morality about shit. They invent this stuff and they go, "I'm upset about that." And I'm fucking. You can't say that. Don't ask questions. Well, no, but this though, like, how did? So he bought the he, he bought the rights, the rights to the pill, yeah. Right. And then he took. Uh, it was thirteen fifty per pill, which is already fucking insane. That's uh, huge. Anyway, I'll, I'll come on to this in just. A minute, All but right. but to seven hundred dollars per pill, okay, and then that, and then actually he's he's on Twitter pretty active. Uh, he's uh, he says I'll raise every f- people. A lot of people have been pointing fingers at me. I'll point one back at you, and I'll give you a hint which finger it is. He's also called a, a reporter who asked him why he raised the price. Called him a moron and said it was a stupid question. Well, he's got he's, he's a got, fun guy. Yeah, no, he has a problem dealing with publicity and the press and all that sort of stuff. But the point is, if you raise the price of something massively, no one's going to buy it. 
they're going to buy a generic version or they're going to buy it off somebody, as Pariah said, you know, to, basically they're going to buy it off somebody who's selling it for $10 cheaper because they don't like you and what you did. And the price is inevitably going to come down. You can't, you can't keep that inflated price going for very this long is, This all. is the one... This is, this, is, this is the truth of economics. You can't do that sort of shit. And also, the other issue I'd take with that is, well, these pills cost a lot of money. They're $13.50 um, a pill. Well, yeah, that's great. That's the second pill. The first pill cost fucking $3 million to produce. You know, so it's all, you know, the first pill is really expensive. The second pill, really cheap. Well, the thing is, this is the one good thing about outsourcing shit to China. Hopefully China will just fuck this guy and be like, ah, $700, we give you two, two cent, fuck you, ha. Ah. So cheap, the A's pill, so cheap. <laughs> so cheap now, hey, fuck them, man. Uh, will you like the A's? No more A's, you get this one, ha, uh, fuck you. And then everybody be like, yay, China, yay, Walmart, yay. China cured AIDS. You should run for president. <laughs> Sound like my cousin Benson. <laughs> yeah, my cousin Benson made that kill for the A's, this one, ha, uh, fuck you, too pricey, this one, so cheap. You know what? No <laughs> more Koposi skull coma for people you. People do not, people listening do not understand this, but Byron was uh, horrendously bullied by clever Chinese kids at school. Yeah. And this is where all of this anger comes from. Yeah. <laughs> but when they, they cure AIDS, grudge over. You know. <laughs> 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 okay, what else you got? Next up, dog shoots man. A Florida man who failed to find homes for his seven three-month-old German shepherd puppies uh, decided his only choice was to shoot each of them in the head and bury them in his backyard. Yeah, that's, that, that's obviously the only choice you have. Yep. <laughs> all, all went well for the first three, but when 37-year-old Jerry Allen Bradford got to puppy number four, things went south. It was, they were puppies, not full-grown dogs. They're three-month-old puppies, yeah. Right, so there's no problem shooting them in the head. Uh, apparently, as he was holding the puppy in question, it reached its paw down and pressed on the trigger, firing the gun... Injuring his would-be murderer. Hang on a minute. So he's got a puppy in his hand. Two puppies, like apparently. Yeah. Two puppies in a hand. And he's holding up a handgun yeah. in front of them, going to shoot them in the head. No, what, number one, why is he holding them up in the air? Why don't you just put them on the floor and shoot them on the floor? Yeah, is he doing and some scene two, out of Hamlet? What well, the fuck? Has he got the gun pointing at himself? And the puppy just goes, oh, I see an opportunity. And then presses its little paw against the trigger. I and think, that, I think puppy number four is like a fucking badass or something. Or well, maybe he shot himself in the finger because he was holding the puppy. Well, the guy's obviously an idiot if he's holding the puppy up in the air and then shooting him no, like that. No, he got shot in the chest. Yeah, oh, so he's, he's holding two puppies and a gun, and apparently then the one of the puppies was just like, no, not this puppy. I think I think true detectives should get to the bottom of this pretty quickly. This sounds like it's some, an episode. This sounds like some drug-related fucking animal hating here. Well, obviously this man is very intelligent. You know, the man who shoots seven puppies in the head. Well, you could Did he try to do it like a... Buried them. That's the thing. This is a funny thing. They're apparently already buried, so he was shooting a puppy right. and then burying it, and then go back and then shoot another puppy. No, no, no. That's no. just That's not cruel. efficient. You shoot no. all puppies, exactly. then you bury all puppies. That's cruel. Because they just, know they're yeah. getting shot and then buried. Is the, the time that you're having them wait is all mental stress. You need to, you're quite right. Boom, boom, boom. 22. Don't be shooting them with a 45. If they're little puppies. They only need a 22. Yeah, see, I mean, if you, you don't know, know this, all you got to do times. is just, just go to like a, a, an instruction, like a, a training manual by like Colombian drug cartels, and they'll be like, this is what you do. Make it easy. Are they from India? I don't know. Yeah, so, that accent. Hero right. puppy. Hashtag hero puppy. Okay, hero puppy. Enough. Yeah, yeah. What was he trying to shoot him with a selfie stick? What the fuck is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> An idiot. How do you shoot yourself shooting puppies? Anyway, what would a Peter, what would a Peter have to say about what this? An idiot. People shouldn't have guns. <laughs> Well, some people Peter have said uh, you don't shoot with them guns. You just shoot them up with like sodium pentothal. That's how you kill puppies. Well, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. That's how Peter do it. And yeah. they're humane. Yeah, so humane. And then commas. you throw them in the dumpster behind the building. That's right. Yeah. And no one knows yeah. until they get warned yeah. by, by. We love animals. Naomi Campbell. Yeah. It's a we love show. animals. There's just too many of them. Let's kill. Them. Just don't physically love them. Okay. Yeah. What else you got? Can a corn chip turn you gay? Uh, probably. probably. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, story over then. Uh, next. Okay. Especially when they taste like <laughs> cock. <laughs> yeah, that's a new flavor by Doritos. Tastes exactly like Filipino penis. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's the story. Yeah, that's... That, no. Is that the story? No, that's not it at all. Because I'm not surprised be... at anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll get surprised apparently, at this. Yeah. Apparently a story, you know, written by you <laughs> there's a that takes on some blog Phil that made no sense. Penis. It's a bit of, there's a bit of mango. That's what it's... It's a nice <laughs> mango zest. Do you know what? I don't normally say this, but that's so racist. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, well, that's not racist at all. I love Filipino <laughs> cock. <laughs> well, then, Matt. A lot of my friends are Filipino penises. That's why you live in Edmonds. <laughs> yep. So wash with Filipino cock. Yeah, at 342 Edmonds Drive. Uh, <laughs> all right. Doritos have released a limited time only rainbow colored bag of Doritos. That's oh, each chip hose. is a different color. Right? What hose? The chips are in association with Dan Savage, who you may remember. Oh, my God. Yep. This just gets better and better. And proceeds go towards the It Gets Better campaign, which oh my seeks God. to lower the rates of teenage gay suicide oh rates. Oh, God. Can no. I just someone get me a sick bag? What? Someone <laughs> get me a sick bag. A bag of Doritos. Oh, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, please. he gets throw up. And Dan all. Savage sponsored fucking Doritos. So the, the story really here is is the reaction that's been pretty funny. Yeah, uh, I'm sure it has. People are, are insanely angry about this. I'm sure they are. Silly PR stunt. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so we got a couple. I got I'm a, never a, buying them ever, ever again. That's uh, that's what people are saying. <laughs> No more I don't, Doritos. I don't care. Do we, you know, Dan Savage is a toxic fucker. That's what. We, okay, they're so saying no up, more Doritos. That's, well, there is a hashtag boycott Doritos has been po- become popular on Twitter, yeah. um, and there's been a lot of funny quotes from the people that are super angry because people have a lot of time that can be angry about yeah, this, sure. right? Um, so one of the quotes I found: maybe the Doritos fag bags can come with a toy <laughs> dildo. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's quite funny on a yeah. base level. <laughs> Um, except for the fact that these people are really angry. If they just thought this was funny and they're yeah, trying to take the piss, I it was right? Funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> so th- another, there's a quote from uh, Ed Stryker of AmericanThinker.com. Yeah, that's already a leading name. Uh, and, uh... <laughs> Doritos are a product marketed towards children, so they make the perfect gateway snack to introduce children to the joys of homosexuality. I think that's a very, very well crafted tweet. <laughs> Why not? I mean, he's made his point. That's it's not the, even a tweet. That's that's just he said that in an article. Oh well, it's, well, it's you, well okay. This is a professional writer. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, one the thing jo- I, I like this here. There's a gateway Gate, Dorito. I love gateway, and I love the joys. <laughs> yeah, the joys of homosexuality, right? There because you if you like something that's mm. crunchy, fucking way do you get a load of dick? Uh, John uh, Nolte of Breitbart News uh, took a I huge can, umbrage. I can only imagine what he's going to say about uh, this. Huge umbrage with Dan Savage. Because uh, they hate Dan Savage. Calling him an uh, infamous anti-Christian bully and bigot. Well, he is, actually. Uh, he noting, pretty much is. Noting how Savage frequently challenges gay deniers to suck his dick every time they say uh, that being gay is not a choice. Yeah, or, yeah. or is a choice. That's what they're... Saying, I actually think that's hilarious. When, whenever, because every time someone says, uh, you know, your sexual orientation is the, it's a choice. You shouldn't be gay, and he just says, well, okay, well, suck my dick then. If it's a choice, prove it. It's a pretty good argument. Yeah, no, oh, they'll say, well, I choose not to suck your dick. How about that? Yeah, then yeah, that'd be a choice. Yeah, well, they, it's a, it's yeah. Anyway, well, I don't know. <laughs> we all remember the time when at age fourteen we said, okay, should I? Be gay or should I be straight, right? Yeah. That's when we all made the Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yourself, yeah. Do you think, you sit like, down with your pros and cons <laughs> list and you, you go dick or vag. You, you're you about 14, you're in the shower and you go, would I like a cock up my body? Probably not. <laughs> maybe but, maybe tomorrow. I should I should I should have chose to be gay because I'm very sexist. Well, no, you should have chose to be gay because you get so much action. Yeah, women. You've got all these men. It's like a ghosted like, on you know, Tinder, and then I get a little yeah. fat man of. I yeah. would love you know, women, to be gay. It's so much you. easier yeah. to get laid. You just should be gay. Make the choice. I can't. Make the choice. Oh, I wish I that's could it. make that choice. I That's the thing. I, I won't. It's, it's what a, we'll do is uh, that's we'll, how vacate, I know. we'll vacate the studio for you and Byron for an hour. We'll go for a drink. See how it works We're out. We're going to leave Narge right. out of this. Narge is the only actual gay person here. Yeah, but Narge doesn't want any of this. No, he's, he's Narge doesn't a, want any of this no. first time fumbling. Yeah, I mean, we don't know what we're doing. Guys. <laughs> it's going to be a bunch. There's a quality gay people. We're in Vancouver. Yeah, he's, he's into the business. You guys are going to mess around for a bit. Yeah, well, we yeah. don't know what to do. All right. All right. So that is the end of fucking news. <laughs> well, isn't that really? And the beginning. So the, pretty much the whole news segment came down to us just being gay. Yeah, well, uh, you know what? The best reaction we've got is all of our talks about penises. That's the best reaction I've, I've seen from people. Right. All the episodes where we talk about dick length and, and totally. go on about oh, it. they like that. Yeah. I want some Confederate flag uh, fucking Cheetos. No, though. they don't That's like that shit. No. The people who do like that shit, they keep quiet. Yeah. <laughs> they, don't, they don't let you know. You know, I don't care if there's rainbows on them. I like Doritos. I don't care. I, you know, you can have Nazi fucking Doritos. I don't care. They're good. Yeah, uh, do you know what? Why no answer okay. from okay. a pro-gay why? agenda Dorito? That's that's yeah. it's all the same. Why, yeah, no. Why can't you have Nazi Doritos with swastikas on them? Yeah. <laughs> why not? Why not? 
Because they're sharp, they'd be sharp and jagged. They cut your mouth. No, no, but I mean, you know, you got Dan Savage Doritos now. And you have Nazi Doritos. You can have, you know, Khmer Rouge. <laughs> Khmer Doritos. Rouge. Doritos. Khmer Rouge corn nuts. Yeah, you can have, you can have all of the stuff. Anything that might, people might find offensive, you have them. Uh, you know, represented on Doritos. Khmer Rouge. That's really retro. Khmer Rouge. Yeah, I know. I'm old. It sounds Khmer like some really Rouge pretentious fashion Doritos. line. Well, yeah, the I only wear Khmer Rouge. The new range from Khmer Rouge Givenchy. Yeah. <laughs> this autumn, only in Paris. Mm. The black pajamas are just fantastic to die for. They have these little espadrilles. They're gorgeous. Also in black. And a red headband. Fantastic. <laughs> RPG 7 Extra. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. I know most of the listeners, if you're from Vancouver, would be like, what the hell is he talking? That sounds really fucking fashionable. Oh, God. I'd no, it meant something else. Never heard oh, of I'm it yesterday. I'm going to Google Khmer Rouge. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's mean. <laughs> Why do you joke about mean stuff? Uh, uh, selfie. <laughs> Shoot a puppy. Just aim for your face. Oh, my God. He shot a puppy on Facebook. <laughs> Oh, dear. To be 18 and from Vancouver, eh? Yeah. What a fucking (laughs) shallow, rapid fucking puddle of (laughs) self-indulgence. Shall Uh, we move on to our game show segment? Yeah, let's move on. Come on. All right. We are going to Who Said It? The game show that asks, Who Said What? Today on Who Said It? Mr. Burns or Donald Trump? Uh, no, Donald Trump. I thought you were going to say Pol Pot. Pol Pot. <laughs> Pulled pork? What? Pulled pork. Pulled pork. <laughs> Pulled pork. Okay, Donald Trump or Mr. Burns. Yep. This is going to be even harder than last week's Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. You know All right. this already. Nard, are you going to keep I mean, score? Yep. Can I just say, Donald Trump and Mr. Burns are basically separated at birth. In that, sort of like, you know, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and... Uh, Except Mr. Burns twins. actually went bald instead of, uh, you know, fucking his hair up with hair transplants. Okay. Is that what he did? He uh, it, did appara- I don't know. And it's definitely hair transplants. Yeah, so if you got that much money, you could have, like, you know, you, you can have a raccoon's ass stuck on your fucking head. Or Cecil the Lion's Which head. He, yeah. Hey, that's... <laughs> Cecil that's, the Lion's mane. Yeah. Yeah. No, Deja no, vu. I would pay to see <laughs> Cecil the Lion's mane on Donald Trump's head. Uh, Sorry, I'm getting excited. Speaking of what? All right. So the first question in today's show, who said it? Mr. Burns from The Simpsons or Donald Trump? Quote number one. My fingers are long and beautiful, as it has been well documented, are various other parts of my body. Uh, That's got to be Mr. Burns. Yeah, Mr. Burns. Zero points. Donald Trump said it. Donald Trump's bragging about the length of his dick. Exactly, yeah. My fingers are long and beautiful like leather parts of my body. Nil, nil. Question number two. By building a casino, I can tighten my stranglehold on this dismal town. This is a trick question. This is fucking Mr. Burns. Yeah, I'll go Donald Trump. Point Ivan, Mr. Burns. Yeah, I've got his MO now. I've got his fucking MO. Yeah. Quote, uh, quote number three. In life, you have to rely on the past, and that's called history. I'll go Donald Trump. I'm going to go... Well, I'm going to go Mr. Burns. Point Byron. Trump Ooh. said it. I've got one. I've got one. Yeah, yep. they are just keeping track, but he's not good with his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, You'll what, be very disappointed to hear yeah. that. Uh, quote, the next quote. You're the fattest thing I've ever seen, and I've been on safari. Oh, that's hard. That is hard. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> after last week's, I'm going to go Donald Trump. Yeah, well, I'm thinking Rosie O'Donnell, so maybe that's Trump. Mr. Burns. Wow. No well, at points. At least we're both not getting points. Is it 1-1? One, one? Yeah, it's it's one, still 1-1. One, one. One. Oh, wow. All right. Uh, just two questions left. This is a hard one. The next one. You're going to have to get Al Pacino and Rosie O'Donnell next time or something <laughs> like that. I don't know. <laughs> Al Pacino and Genghis Kong. What yeah. the who said this? Next quote. Who said the following? You don't have to sue me to get my pants off. That's uh, Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns. Point for each. We, a 2-2 two, two tie. Wow. Two love. All right, so the next one is possibly the deciding factor here. Uh, last quote. Part of the beauty of me is that I'm very rich. I'll Donald go, Trump. Donald Trump. 
point for each. It's Ooh. a tie. Oh, ding, 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 ding. Three love. Can Woo! I just make a request? Next week, can we have Aristotle and Katy Perry? Aristotle. Because <laughs> <laughs> this, this yeah. really close shit is making me nervous. And then I want. And I really want some easy stuff that we can And then I want with. Plato and uh, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Aristotle and Katy Perry. I'm writing it down. Week. Aristotle, which I can't spell, and Katy Perry. All right. And then I want Pol Pot and Rihanna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can, you can bamboozle us with those, you're a, question, you're, you're a quiz master worth his salt. <laughs> All right. That is the end of Who Said It? The game show that asks... Who said what? Today's show, we had a two, a three, three tie. I know. Do you know what, Matt? I just want to say, I really enjoy these. Yeah, they're, this, they're good. good. They're really good. They're actually getting better. Yes. Thanks, guys. All right. We, that's the end of, uh, you know, our regular bullshit, but we have a uh, special guest uh, editorial by who? Pierre Dracalua. I always fuck, Again, I always no, fuck you, her you, last you, name you, up. No, I fuck up the first name. You fuck up the second name. I know. It's such it a wild like name. It sounds like you're flubbing it. You're like, uh, Pyro Dracula. No. Uh, uh, uh. Pyro Dracula. There, there you go. There we go. Oh, Sorry. Right. Do you want me to do it again? Nah. Yeah, we'll yeah. Fuck it. There you go. There we go. And you don't like to monitor yourself, so <coughs> it's fine. Ugh. Have a seat. And then we're done after her? Yeah. Great. And just let me know where you want the level. Uh, how's this? Uh, about the right uh, volume? All right. Hi, I'm Pura Draculea. I'm female, and I'm about to turn 37. For you men and young chicks who don't know, 37 is that magic age where a woman loses her goddamn mind. You know, the nesting instinct goes into overdrive, you buy a purple glue gun, and you start starting your day off reading design blogs for an hour. Elements of style, apartment therapy, or if you're into the hard stuff, domino. The urge to watch HGTV becomes overwhelming and you start mentally decorating houses you will never buy in Midwestern city. <laughs> sorry, let me do that <laughs> sorry, <sentence> again. Sorry. <laughs> the urge to watch HGTV becomes... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> you can't say HGTV <laughs> without laughing, can you? <laughs> no. <clears throat> <clears throat> the urge to watch HGTV becomes overwhelming and you start mentally decorating houses you will never buy in Midwestern cities you wouldn't be caught dead in. Sure, that living room in the third place just outside the loop in Kansas City is kind of small and dark, but if you paint it bright white, knock in a skylight... Put in an existentialist gray mid-century modern sofa with an oriental rug, but blue, not red, definitely a blue oriental rug, with a lucite console table bearing an antique French hall mirror flanked by some vintage crystal wall sconces, plus plain unbleached linen drapes with purple pom-pom trim. No, apple green pom-pom trim. If you had all that, with a live edge ash coffee table, then maybe it would be possible to live in Kansas City without killing yourself. HGTV is only the start, though. I've been at home since way too much lately, and I know this because the poor, miserable retail workers give me a smile and nod of recognition now. Not a good sign. Worse yet is the thrifting, rescuing other people's unwanted art glass phases, kitschy shell whatever things to hang from the ceiling, and faux Tiffany lamps. Oh, and those bumpy milk glass lamps I always thought were so hideous when I was a kid. I suddenly want, like them now. I want to get like 17 of them, all different sizes and shapes, and add white drum lampshades with beaded trim and different shades of pink and orange. Well, that brings us to the DIY blogs. It's the crack cocaine of home decor. So far, I have contact papered my IKEA crap. I'm swapping out plain drawer knobs for Indian knobs from eBay. Oh my God, so boho. And I've even taken to making my own Roman blinds, mint green brocade with copper matte sequin trim. And while I don't have any unbleached linen drapes yet, I do have some nice gray floral ones from Yes Them Totally adding turquoise pom-pom trim too. God help me. Well, at least I'm not on the wallpaper kick yet. And at least I haven't sunk so low as to join Pinterest. That's for next year when I turn 38. See, this is what happens to you when you don't have kids to obsess over. 
Maybe I should just get a dozen cats instead. They're so much cheaper, and I'd be so much saner as a crazy cat lady. Anywho, I gotta go glue some glass bubble thingies onto some ceramic pot. <laughs> Not pot. <laughs> Let me do that again. Anyway, I gotta go glue some glass bubble thingies to some ceramic plant pots and then get like 50 likes on Instagram from other haggard old broads my own age. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You know, the one thing I want to say about cats is that yeah. there is an unwritten rule that I discovered here in Vancouver. Yeah. I've got a friend here who uh, shared a, an apartment with a cop, and he said that they have an unwritten rule, and that is that if the cops go to an apartment and there's more than two cats there, more than two mm-hmm. cats, they immediately, in their minds, go, we're dealing with a mad person. <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) More than two cats. I've told people this, and they've been horrified. And the look on their face just tells me that they have three or more cats. Yeah, and it's true. It is true. I mean, it must be based in something. It must be based on fact, or else the cops wouldn't make that shit up. Well, wait a sec. I I dated a a really nice girl, and she had, like, four cats. Right. But then she... uh, she, went insane. she just stared at me when I was sleeping and pulled out all of her hair and then started crying when I just said hello to her. <laughs> Wait a sec, she was crazy. <laughs> well, isn't it something about some, uh, there's some parasite that lives in cat shit that gets airborne and that causes you to kind of go into a mild form of schizophrenia. Yeah, I didn't know So that. I guess the, dra- the drapes <clears throat> runs up the visa, but it's a you little know safer. What? That's really interesting and that explains a lot. <laughs> You know what? Pets pets suck. Just come on. Get over it. Says a man who can't even look after himself. No, that's I can't even look it's true. I can't even look after myself. Why do you want an animal? It's well, not gonna you, you know, you, you, it's not gonna it's just here's the thing what what I hate about animal pet lovers in a lot of ways. Everybody's like hey, oh, yeah, oh that's I'm having a great social country. I, I have a great I have a great party, we're having a great party, we're having a great time. Oh I gotta go. I gotta go to this fucking thing that just claws up on my furniture, shits everywhere, <laughs> and gives me nothing and can't even communicate with me. And then it's gonna die and then I'll feel sad and then I get to update Facebook and like, My pet died, eighty five likes. I'm sorry, and then you get to jerk off to the validation. It's horrible. Fuck pets. <laughs> That's pretty fair. Yeah. I, I think everything that you've just said is pretty valid. Yeah. And yeah. also, I would raise the point that if you want an animal living in your house that doesn't care if you live or die and doesn't particularly like you, go for an iguana. They're hypoallergenic. Yeah, fair enough. And they shit yeah. in the shower. I know that because a crazy friend <laughs> threw one in the shower with me. Mine used to like crapping on the sofa when it was mad at me and then watching me clean it up. <laughs> well, uh, you, 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 you guys say this like there's a lot of crap. Good created by these these iguanas. I mean, I can imagine it's a bit like a sort of like an athletic rat poo. <laughs> iguanas right. are funny. They look like the creepy stepfather uh, <laughs> just lurking at you. Yeah. Also, iguanas, I lived with one for like 10 years. They, You can kind of get them a little bit uh, trained to sort of go in a laundry tub or sink, but if they're mad at you, they'll just hold it and then go on your sofa. Oh, to really? Teach they you get angry and they, they punish you. Absolutely. They're like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, not giving me enough attention. I don't need much. But oh, no, actually, enough. it's like, I don't want any attention. Stop oh. watching what I'm doing over oh, okay. here. Okay, <laughs> leave me alone. Yeah. yeah, so iguanas and kids don't mix. Not usually, no. No, fair <laughs> enough. All right. Well, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I'd like to say good night. My name's been Ivan Penaluna. I'm baby uh, bow constrictor feeding Byron Bertram. <laughs> and I'm Pure Draculeo. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> And now, a dry shave show, Candid Moment. It's the party. It's uh, my wife's 40th and my 50th. We had our birthdays in the summer, but we were so busy with yeah. children and oh, everything great. Well, yeah, then we that we couldn't do it. And now the kids are back at school. It'll be late October, early November. It's going to be a bit, It's going to be at our house. It's going to be probably quite a big blowout. Great. So um, you're all invited. Lord Larry Coke party special. Via the nice Lord house. Larry, nice via house. Lord Larry, the Coke party special. There might be some <laughs> ecstasy there. I don't know. Anyway, is George going to come? Is your, uh, your kid going to be there to tell my, me to... Of course, my, no, my kid's going to be looked after by my neighbor's kids. Oh, it's too bad. I really like I really like your kid with his... The, the first time he saw me, he was like... I was like, hi, nice to meet you. He was like, hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Which one's like, the older one? Yeah, oh, that'd be Otto yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, that was yeah. Otto, and I was, uh, yeah. I was like, that's hilarious. I told my girlfriend, she's like, I like this kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's got, to, yeah, it's Tourette's, mate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's Tourette's. That's that's the friendly side of Tourette's. Yeah. And then he came in and he farted a bunch during the Dylan yeah. Reimer episode. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's funny. It was yeah. so bad too, and I we were recording. I couldn't say anything. No. I was like, oh god. Oh, no. he like really bad. Oh, farts? he was just farting away, wow. and it was just bad. It was silent. And then he said he didn't fart. No one brought it up. 
Yeah. No one said anything about the farts that were wow. filling our faces. Yeah. Uh, but but he just was like, oh, I didn't fart or anything. He was like, oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> My nose is on fire. Because kids' farts smell a certain way. It is true, yeah. It's, it's a certain sharp smell. There yeah. is, there is. It's like a and fine wine. And, and, and kids' farts have a kind of <laughs> innocence about them at the same time. It's almost like, oh, your intestinal tract isn't fully developed, is yeah. it? Oh, brutal. <laughs> Oh, you oh haven't been God. shamed yet by a girl. Oh. Like, you don't feel bad about it. It's this. like this stinks even worse, but it's so adorable because you're a kid. That's terrible. <laughs> That's gross. Yeah, so he'll be there. Oh, okay? good. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. get him over to fart in your face and say hello. How about that? Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's from Daddy. Yeah. All right, also, I'm not busy also now. can you come over? Because there's uh, Matty's here. You remember Matty? He wants you to say hello and fart in his face. Yeah, be yeah. sarcastic. I don't know and what. Fart He's a on weird him. guy. He's a weird guy, Otto. Just, just, just play along. He must have some German ancestry <laughs> or something. He likes it. And, and you'll have some beakers outside the door in case <laughs> pe- there's nowhere to pee when we're in the bathroom. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody will have their own beaker. Uh, have a, have a yeah, go have the beaker. Own, you'll be giving it when you come in. It'll be yours. Yeah. You, can, you have to empty it before. You, don't obviously let it f- overflow. <laughs> overflow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But if it's a if coffee mug, don't... If there's an opportunity don't. to pour it down the toilet, do so. But don't right? pee into the coffee mug, right? If no, you, you know what? I'll, yeah. Hey, I got you know, I know a colostomy bag guy, so I could bring all that <laughs> shit. I got liners for everybody. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Let's, uh, that's okay. good. I'll put that at right. the end of the... All right. Cool. Enough. This all is right. good. Yeah. I mean, the little outtakes like that, they're, they're, they're fine and dandy. Yeah. Totally. The Dry Shave Show is a production of Leone Digital Podcast Network.